I'd just like to thank both of you guys for being here. And in the interest of fairness, I know I'm playing devil's advocate here, pun intended, but um, I think since almost all of the questions are gonna be directed towards uh, uh, the Mr. Hitchens, I think we, we should have one for Dr. Craig. They're all for both of us. <laughs> um, for Dr. Craig, what do you think about uh, Epicurus' argument that if God is omnibelevant, omniscient, and omnipotent, if he knows about kids in Africa and he, uh, like, that are born with like AIDS, um, what do you think about him suggesting, like him not intervening and him not changing uh -huh. that fact? Like, I don't, I, like, that's a question that I've always uh, struggled with, so I'm just wondering, yeah. uh, like, could you expand on that and I'd also like your yeah. input on it? The problem of evil and suffering has been greatly discussed by philosophers, and I think there's been genuine progress made uh, in this century on this problem. I think it's important to distinguish between the intellectual problem of suffering and the emotional problem of suffering. YouTube, what it do? It's your boy, Black Atheist Rants, back with another video. And today we are going to be reacting to this video. I was watching the debate between Christopher Hitchens and William Lane Craig. And towards the end, he said some things that were disturbing and disgusted me. So I'm going to give you my take on it. Now, the student basically asked William Lane Craig about the problem of evil and suffering. He quoted Epicurus, and before we get into William Lane Craig's response, I wanna show you what he's talking about in regards to Epicurus. So basically the kid in the video is referring to this quote right here, and it says, is God willing to prevent evil but not able? Then he is not omnipotent. Is he able but not willing? Then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? then whence cometh evil? Is he neither able nor willing? Then why call him God? So right when I paused the video, William Lane Craig had brought up how there is the intellectual problem of suffering versus the emotional problem of suffering. So let's hear what he got to say. Because these are quite different from each other. In terms of the intellectual problem of suffering, I think that there you need to ask yourself, is the atheist claiming as Epicurus did, that the existence of God is logically incompatible with the evil and suffering in the world. Is the existence of God logically incompatible with the evil and suffering in the world? My answer to that is no. Now, let me rephrase the question. Is the existence of an all-loving, omnipotent God a benevolent God, a God that cares about you, a God that has your best interest, a God that doesn't pick favorites, a God that loves us all, a God that wants what's best for us, right? Is the existence of that type of God incompatible with suffering and evil? Yes. A God that doesn't want to watch pain get inflicted on others, a God that doesn't enjoy suffering and pain and bloodshed and murder and genocide is that type of god incompatible with the existence of evil and suffering in this world i would think so would you not see let's not play these games the way that he formed a question you know what i'm saying you got to pay attention to who he's talking to he's talking to a, a room full of christians in this debate but see we know the truth we know that's not, we know, they know that's not what we mean, because just like I just showed you in Epicurus's quote, he was referring to an omnipotent God, a benevolent God, a God that gives a fuck about you. You see, we're not just talking about any old God. They tell us God loves us. They tell us God cares about us. They tell us God wants a relationship with us. He has a plan for all of us. This is what they tell us. But the proof is not in the pudding. I'm okay with a God that exists that doesn't care about all of us. I'm okay with a God that exists that wants pain to be inflicted on you and me. I'm okay with a God that exists that enjoys racism and loves suffering and loves rape and loves genocide and discrimination and pedoph pedophilia, incest, and et cetera, et cetera. I'm okay with this God existing as long as you tell the truth about him. 
we didn't, you know what I'm saying? If your God exists, cool, but you don't have to add things to him that are lie. You don't have to talk about him as if he gives a fuck about me when he doesn't. You don't have to talk about him like he loves all of us. It's okay for your God to exist. And you just come straight out and say, look, God exists, but he has favorites. God exists, but he's not, he's not omnipotent. He's not benevolent. That's okay. But see, you're adding things to him that makes an eyebrow raise. They tell us that he loves us, that he cares about us. He wants a relationship with us. He has a plan for all. He has grace and mercy. Just don't tell us that. When you come to the pool pit, when you come down to the altar, when you get in front of a group of people, tell them the truth. I have a God that exists. He sent his son to die for your sins, but he don't He don't have a plan for all of us. Some of us are going to suffer under his watch. Some of us are going to get killed brut- brutally. Right. Some of us are going to have harm done to us on his watch in his presence and he enjoys it and he wants this to happen to you. So I'm not promising you a good life. I'm not promising you protection from God. I just want you to say he exists. If you if you tell us that I'll be cool. But you're talking as if God gives a fuck about me. And that has me that has me ticked. I'm teed up. I'm fired up off of that because that's cap. So when he asks this question is the existence of God incompatible with human suffering and pain and evil and all this shit? Of course not. That's not what we're saying. Just don't call him omnipotent. Don't call him all loving. Don't say things out of your, your trap. Don't say things out of your shithole like God is love. That is not true. That is kept on every level of the word. That's, that's false information. You blaspheming. You telling lies and false. That's fiction. Quit lying on your Lord and Savior. He don't give a fuck about all of us. Just say that. If that's what the atheist is claiming, then he's got to be presupposing some kind of hidden assumptions that would bring out that contradiction and make it explicit, because these statements are not explicitly contradictory. The problem is no philosopher in the history of the world has ever been able to identify what those hidden assumptions would be that would bring out the contradiction and make it explicit. On the contrary, You can actually prove that these are logically compatible with each other by adding a third proposition, namely, that God has morally sufficient reasons for permitting the evil in the world. As long as that statement is even possibly true, it proves that there's no logical incompatibility between God and the suffering in the world. So basically what he's saying is God has logical reasons why he allows pain and suffering and evil into this world. God is morally justified. He has justification for why all these bad things happen. Right. Would he would he go out? I'm, I'm wondering, would he go out in a crowd of people that are starving? That have diseases, terminal illness, would he go out in front of them and say this is the truth? Of course he wouldn't. But he says it here. Live and in color. But how would you feel watching this knowing that bad things have happened to you and the justification for that is, well, God has his reasons. His ways are higher than our ways. That's basically what he's saying. Is it possible? Could it be that God has a good reason why these things happen to you? What could be a good reason to watch children get raped, to watch children starve? Why would he allow children to be born with terminal illnesses where they live a fucking week, where they live a couple days? There are humans in other parts of this world as we're speaking that are starving, that need food, water, shelter, which is what he created and designed these vessels to run on. They need the things to survive in this world. And God watches. What is the moral justification for that? Plus, let me add a caveat to it. If you we read the Bible stories, right, where the God comes down and intervenes and helps out. So all I'm saying is, where is the consistency at? If you're going to tell me God has his reasons for why these things happen, then cool. But then when I read his word, when I dive into the word of God, 
he literally comes down and helps. He sends bread from the sky. He sends water. He, he lets the water flow out of rocks and shit. He brings shelter. He defends. He protects. He has angels coming down and guiding people. So I'm okay with you telling me God has moral justification for why my people were enslaved. But then I turn around and watch how he comes down and intervenes in the Bible. And I'm asking you, wait a minute. Is If the bad things are just supposed to happen to us because he has a plan for us, why does he come down and stop them in the book? Let me cook. Let me work out. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this logic. I'm okay with this argument. God, we have free will or whatever, or God is just going to let the bad things happen to us because he has a good reason why. I'm okay with that. But then I get jealous. My people get jealous. My eyebrow, my eyebrow raises when I read the book and he helps. He intervenes. He stops tragedy. He defends. Let my people go. He's splitting seeds so motherfuckers can cross it. He's feeding 5,000. The angels come down. Abraham gets promises of, of land and covenants and shit. I get jealous. I want some consistency. Don't get on stage. Don't get on YouTube. Don't get on social media and talk about how these things are supposed to just happen. But then you thank God for when you thank God when he helps you. Bad things are supposed to happen to us, but they're thankful when God protects them. They believe he's protecting them first. And then they thank him when he does it. They believe he's giving them, he's blessing them with food and water. And then they thank him when he does it. They believe he's covering them. They're covered in the blood. These people believe this stuff. It's not lining up. On one hand, they're telling us the bad things are going to happen to you because God has a plan. God has his reasons and he's justified. He's sovereign. He can do what the fuck he want to do with us. And on the other hand, they thank him when he steps in. I'm confused. I would be, I would, that don't make sense. That's confusing black atheists. I don't understand that part. I'm sure William Lane Craig is, is blessed. He feels highly favored by God. He has a lot of things. He probably has a nice house, a healthy family, a little wealth on him. Got a little nice little car. He can do what he want. He, he's, he's, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure he's thanking God for these things. He's praising God for the Why? Why do you thank God for the good things? If you told, if you're telling us, he just supposed to, the bad things supposed to just happen to you. And you're supposed to be okay with it because this is, this, God has moral justification. And I'm not saying God doesn't exist because there's evil and suffering in the world. I'm saying an omnipotent, benevolent God that gives a fuck about me doesn't exist. That doesn't give a fuck about you. That doesn't, that doesn't, you know what I'm saying, help us all across the board. Why, do, why is there pain and suffering in general if the God is love? That's my argument. You can, I'm okay with him existing. I'm okay with him being morally justified. I'm okay with him having his reasons. But don't call him love. Don't call him good. Don't call him all love, all powerful, all good. Stop that. That's the part that's throwing me off. Don't tell me to come worship your Lord and Savior when he doesn't care about me and my folks, my family, my tribe, my diaspora. So the atheist would have to show that it is logically impossible for God to have morally sufficient reasons for permitting the evil and suffering in the world. And no atheist has ever been able to do that. So the, the logical version of this problem, I think, is widely recognized to have failed. I just want to add this. To this part right here, even if God has sufficient reasons for why he allows evil and suffering to happen to us, what are we supposed to do with that information? Worship anyway? Well, you know, today a bomb might get dropped on us. You know, little black girls get bombed at the church. You know what I'm saying? Civil rights leaders get assassinated. Well, it's just God's plan, you know. He has sufficient reasons for why he allows these things to happen. Let's just let's just praise anyway. Let's just worship anyway. Even if you have a good reason to do something, that don't mean it that that don't make it okay. Does it not? Does it make it okay? Well, it's God, you know. Are you you going to starve to death tomorrow? You know, it's just God. That's is that how I'm supposed to respond to this? Even if he's writing this video, so what? What do we do with that information? God is justified. Now what? Just sit back and wait for your day. Like final destination. Just wait for your turn to get, get to get brutal brutalized. 
Just wait for your turn for the injustice to happen to you. Just wait for your turn for the discrimination and the racism. Right? Wait for your turn for the rape. Your turn coming. You know what I'm saying? God has justified your time coming. Just wait on it. Like the Migos say, just wait on it. Just wait on your time. Right? What am I supposed to do with this information? I got I got serious I got real life problems. I got serious things to worry about. And the response is, well, you know, God's morally justified. So <laughs> what are we to do? I can't get down with that. I can't worship that. I can't praise that. I don't have no I don't have nothing in my heart for that. Those atheists who still press the problem, therefore press it as a probabilistic argument. They try to say that given the evil in the world, it's improbable that God exists. Not impossible, but improbable. Well, again, the difficulty there is that the atheist has to claim that if God did exist, then it is improbable that he would permit the evil and suffering in the world. And how could the atheist possibly know that? How could the atheist know that uh, God would not, if he existed, permit the evil and suffering in the world. Maybe he's got good reasons for it. Maybe, like in Christian theism, God's purpose for human history is to bring the maximum number of people freely into his kingdom to find salvation and eternal life. And how do we know that that wouldn't require a world that is simply suffused with natural and moral suffering? So my problem with this is According to Christianity, God controls everything and he already knows what's going to happen. What does it matter if people come to him naturally or not? Like, what is that about? Who cares? He already knows. Like, could God have created this world in a way where he gets his point across without pain and suffering? Yes, he's God, isn't he? You see what they do when it benefits them, when it puts them in a position where they are correct they try to limit god don't put limitations on your god this is an all-powerful deity isn't it not isn't your god all-powerful he can do whatever the fuck he want so who are you to limit him and say this is how he needed the world to be for people to come to him freely no 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 there is no free we're puppets whether we want to be or not according to this religion so cut that out Cut that, he wanted us to come naturally and free. Man, I'm not trying to hear that. He already controlling me. He's controlling my atheism as we speak, if this is true. This is all part of his plan. So don't talk to me like, well, we have a free will, and he wants us to use our free will to come to him. Yeah, the free will that he gave us. How is it free if you gave it to me? You created me this way, and I'm doing exactly what you want me to do. And I'm and he's talking about how this is how is this how the world needed to be with evil and suffering to this magnitude for God to get his point across. Well, I got to show you that you could get raped and murdered and you could get discriminated against. So let me create this world so bad and so messed up to the point where if you come to me, I know you came to me naturally. I know you came to me free. Like, what are we talking about? What are we saying? What are what, what's coming out of our throats? What are we talking about? God could have created this world a different way. If he's God, according to them, according to their theology, according to their doctrine, according to their dogma, he could have created this world a different way. He chose not to. This is exactly how he wanted this. I need you to get that through your head. Whatever you're going through, whatever hardship you have. Whatever pain and evil and suffering awaits you, that's exactly how this God set it up so that you could come to him naturally on your own free free will. Come on. What are we saying? The trip part is the world that we would like to exist. He created it. It's called heaven, but he's dangling it over your head. Let me put you let me put you through these trials and tribulations jump through these hoops to get what i created you to desire in the first place we we desire i desire a heaven where there's no pain and suffering and everybody's great since i exist and i'm you know i care about others and i wouldn't mind heaven existing but he created exactly what i would want for this world this universe 
dangling it over my head. Mm-mm. You can't just get this. You got to work for it. You got to suffer. You got to go through evil just to get what I created you to long for. Doesn't make sense to me. He could have created. He could have just created heaven. He could have skipped the middle man, skipped this middle step and just take us straight there. Because he's controlling all this anyway, if their religion is true. It might be that only in a world like that, the maximal number of people would freely come to know God and find salvation. So the atheist says who? It might be in a world like that, where the most the most amount of people could come to him freely. Why, who says who? Why are you blaspheming? Why do you get to make that assumption about God? Don't question your Lord and Savior. Don't question, don't, don't question God. Don't mock God like that. Don't test him like that. He could have did better. He could have done a better job than this. And if you disagree with me, some, something's fucking wrong with you. If you disagree with what I just said, something's wrong with you. God could have done a better job creating all of this madness. I know it's against your religion to think outside the box. I know it's against your religion to make sense. I know common sense ain't common. He just made an assumption about God. Why did you do that? I'm, I'm making the same thing he just did. I'm asking him to do. Could, could, how do we not know? This is the exact way he needed everything to be. And how do we, how do we not know he could have did a better job? How do we not know he could have created the world in a way where he gets that point across about him loving us and him, and all that bullshit without it, without all this pain and suffering. He just would have to show that there is a possible world that's feasible for God, which God could have created that would have just as much salvation and eternal life and knowledge of God as the actual world, but with less suffering. And how could the atheist prove such a thing? It's sheer speculation. So the problem is that as an argument, the problem of evil makes probability judgments, which are very, very ambitious and which we are simply not in a position to make with any kind of confidence. Now, I recognize that that philosophical response to the question doesn't deal with the emotional problem of evil. And I think for most people, this isn't really a philosophical problem. It's an emotional problem. They just don't like a God who would permit suffering. Why do you? Why do you like a God that would permit suffering? What's wrong with you? Have you lost your humanity? What's wrong with you? Why are you okay with a God that will permit suffering? Why are Christians okay with a God that will permit suffering? Uh, and and uh, pain in the world. And so they turn their backs on him. What does Christianity have to say to this problem? Well, I think it has a lot to say. It tells us that God is not some sort of an impersonal ground of being or an indifferent tyrant who folds his arms and watch, watches the world suffer. Rather, he is a God who enters into human history in the person of Jesus Christ. And what does he do? He suffers. There it is. Go back to my live stream. Remember what I said. You are called to suffer as a Christian. You got to search it up on YouTube. It's on my YouTube channel. Go watch that live stream. As a Christian, you are called to suffer. And I finally have the answer why. You're called to suffer. Because your God came down, entered human history, and he suffered. You suffer because God suffered. That is the answer to that question. That is why you're called to go through pain and evil and suffering. Because your God came down, entered into human history in the flesh as Jesus Christ. And what did he do? He suffered. And my question to you is, does that make all of this okay? Does that satisfy your taste buds for answers? Why is there evil and suffering in this world? Because God came down and suffered. Let me spell it out for you. As your Lord and Savior, as your God, as Yahweh, as the I am, as the Elohim, I'm going to create rape and racism and genocide and murder and discrimination 
and I'm going to create infections and diseases and bone cancer and breast cancer. And I'm going to create all of this pain, all of this suffering. I want it to hurt when you have kids. I want it to hurt when you die. I want it to hurt just to live. I want you to get old and your body deteriorates. I want all type of pain and suffering, earthquakes, tsunamis. You know what I'm saying? I want floods, thunder, rain, fucking volcanic eruption. I want all of this. I'm going to create it all. The most pain and suffering I can think of, I'm going to create it all. And guess what, kids? I'm going to justify it by coming down and suffering. I'm going to justify it by giving up a couple hours. Mm, mm, mm. Let me cook this shit. I'm going to create all of this pain and suffering and I'm going to put you through it. And to justify my actions, I'm going to give up a weekend to justify my actions. I'm going to give up a couple of three days on the third day. He rose. I'm going to give up two days and a half up here for a little bit, a little minute and then go back up to heaven. How sick is that? How sick like that? That, that don't disgust you. You don't feel that. I'm going to create all of this and put you through it. And my justification is because I gave up a couple hours. I gave up a, 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 a Friday, a Saturday, and Sunday I was back home. Now, since I did it for a couple of days, you got to do it forever. Put, I'm going to put you through the ringer. Your whole life, your whole existence on this planet, I'm putting you through hell. Put your boots on, strap them up. How do you feel about that? Does that satisfy you? That sickness. Why would you want to believe that? Why would you wish that to be true? I would rather it be the case that this is just random mutations, biology, chemistry, and a little bit of evolution. I would, I would rather it be that. I would rather it be just the natural universe, no gods included. I would, ha I would hate for a God to exist and this be his logic. I sacrificed myself to myself for a weekend so that I can put you through the fucking torture, the, the pain and suffering, motherfucker. I gave up a weekend so I could torture you. Now believe this shit. That's what that's what they telling us. That's what's coming out his mouth. I don't have the wrong interpretation. I know how to put one and one together and make two motherfucker. This is sick. On the cross, Christ bore a suffering of which we can form no conception, even though he. Now he says, oh, I got to keep pausing this shit. He said Christ bore a suffering of which we cannot compare. Who can't compare? Who can't compare? Who can't compare to the suffering that Christ bore on the cross for a weekend? Who? Reverend George Lee. One of the first black people registered to vote in Humphreys County used his pulpit and his printing press to urge others to vote. White officials offered Lee protection on the condition he ended his voter registration efforts, but Lee refused and was murdered. Who? Who, do, who, who can't conceive of this suffering? Lamar Smith was shot dead on the courthouse lawn by a white man in broad daylight while dozens of people watched. The killer was never indicted because no one would admit they saw a white man shoot a black man. Who can't conceive of this suffering? Emmett Lewis Teal, a 14-year-old boy on vacation from Chicago, reportedly flirted with a white woman in a store. Three nights later, two men took Teal from his bed, beat him, shot him, and dumped his body in the Tallahatchie River. An all-white jury found the men innocent of murder. Christ bore a suffering of which we can't even fathom, huh? Huh? Willis Edwards Jr., a truck driver, was on his way to work when he was stopped by four Klansmen. The men mistook Edwards for another man who they believed was dating a white woman. They forced Edwards at gunpoint to jump off a bridge into the Alabama River. Edwards' body was found three months later. Who can't understand who can't who can't fathom this 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 suffering that Christ bore? My people have been going through this forever. 
Mac Charles Parker, was accused of raping a white woman. Three days before his case was set for trial, a mass mob took him from his jail cell, beat him, shot him, and threw him in the Pearl River. Herbert Lee, who worked with civil rights leader Bob Moses to help register black voters, was killed by a state legislator who claimed self-defense and was never arrested. Lewis Allen, a black man who witnessed the murder, was later also killed. Christ bore a suffering of which we can't understand, we can't conceive of, black folks can. We've been going, we've been going through this. Medgar Evers, who directed NAACP operations in Mississippi, was leading a campaign for integration in Jackson when he was shot and killed by a sniper at his home. Is this not the suffering? Is this not suffering? So who can't understand what Christ bore? My people been doing this. We've we been trying to get motherfucking equality and freedom and dying for it. They've been treating us like shit. We've been accused of not even being humans. Not even being full-fledged humans. Having to fight just to, just to, just to be equal, just to be left alone. They killing us because we don't look like them. Who don't understand what Christ went through? Addie Mae Collins, Denise McNair. Carol Robertson and Cynthia Wesley were getting ready for church services when a bomb exploded at the 16th Street Baptist Church, killing all four of the school aged girls. The church had been a center for civil rights meetings and marches. Christ bore a suffering of which we have no conception. My people got a conception of this shit. What's a weekend when this shit going on for years, centuries, decades, millennia? What you talking about? Who can't understand what your, your, your fucking white Jesus went through, bitch? Who can't understand that? Hmm? Who don't know suffering more than we? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a Baptist minister, was a major architect of the civil rights movement. He led and inspired major nonviolent desegregation campaigns, including those in Montgomery and Birmingham. He won the Nobel Peace Prize. He was assassinated as he prepared to lead a demonstration in Memphis. Who can't understand what your Lord and Savior went through? Two honorable mentions that wasn't on this website, Fred Hampton, Malcolm X. Who's, who don't understand what your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ went through on that cross? My people been doing this shit. We've been, we been getting tortured. They've been putting us through suffering. We've been suffering. So I disagree with that statement when he talks about how we can't conceive, we have no conception of what Jesus Christ went through on the main. Fuck that cross. He didn't die for your sins. He died so he could torture you. He didn't die for your sins. Jesus ain't died for shit. He died. He picked up his cross. He let them torture him just so he could die for a couple hours and raise back up and bring hellfire on you. I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of them talking about what Jesus Christ did. Like that was something we ain't been doing. We been doing this shit. We been doing this shit. Fuck what Jesus went through. He ain't died for me. The people I just showed you, the people I mentioned, they was fighting for something that would benefit me now. What did Jesus Christ do that benefits me now? That, that word of God that he came up with, yeah, they used that to enslave my fucking people. So what did he do that benefited me? Shit. People that look like me, people that dress like me, people that have the same hair texture as me, they died for my motherfucking sins. They died so I could be free. They died so I could record this video. They died for my equality. They died fighting for what was right. They died trying to live a normal life like I'm trying to live. So I understand. When they talk about Jesus Christ, I talk about my people. You got one person that claimed to have died for you. I got a whole motherfucking list. Like we could write a whole book of people that, man, come on, man. Stop playing with me. We could write a whole book about these people that died for me, that died for you, that died for us. My Lord and Savior ain't no fucking Jesus Christ. My Lord and Savior, these motherfucking people that died for my sins, for real, my folks. I would give them that glory, that praise and worship. I'm not praising and worship no mother. Come on, man. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. I'm not giving no praise and worship to a motherfucker that gave up a couple of hours so he can cause damnation and hellfire on me so he can so he can sentence me to a life of, of pain and suffering. I'm not giving that motherfucker no worship. Now, if Jesus was still dead, that'd be cool. It'd be a little more leeway. But no, he ain't even dead no more. How, how can I not have a conception of what he went through when that motherfucker's still alive, walking around, intervening, casting out demons? Washing over. How, who can't, who can't, come on, stop it. Stop that cap.
God ain't on that level. Because when we was fighting for freedom, he didn't come down and help nobody. He didn't prevent Martin Luther King from getting assassinated, Malcolm X from getting assassinated. What, what were these people saying that was so bad that God put them on that list, I'm going to let you die just like that? What came out of their mouths? What did they do that was so bad that God allowed them to get assassinated and murder all these people? All these black people, all these black people, all these civil rights activists, all these people trying to live a better life, a regular life so that I can have a life. What was the moral justification for that? What was the moral justification for watching 400 years of that? 500 years of that? Christ bore a suffering of which we have no conception. Shut the fuck up. He was innocent. He bore the penalty of the sins of the whole world. None of us can comprehend what he suffered. And I think when we contemplate the cross of Christ and his love for us and what he was willing to undergo for us, it puts the problem of suffering in an entirely different perspective. It means, I think, that we can bear the suffering that God calls upon us to endure in this life with courage and with optimism for an eternal life of unending joy beyond the grave because of what Christ has done for us. And he will give us, I think, the courage and the, the strength to get through the suffering that God calls upon us to bear in this life. So that's disgusting. And that's sick. I'm disgusted. I can't watch no more of that. That's disgusting. Like I said, the God can put you through pain and suffering and you can bear it because he went through it. Your emotional problem of evil and suffering, man, fuck that. God died for your sins so that he could torture you and put you through this. This little, this little evil and pain and suffering that you got to bear, that's nothing because the God came down and did it. When you get raped, when you get shot, when you get robbed, when people are racist towards you, when people discriminate against you for whatever reason, when you starving to death, you, you dying of dehydration, you got an illness, you got cancer, you get hit with a fucking bomb, an earthquake, a tsunami, thunder. So what? Man, God, 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 God came down and suffered. So you can bear that little pain. You can bear, you can bear being snatched from your family and never seen them again and then sold into slavery. You can, you can bear that. You can bear being, being hung and lynched in public. You can bear that. You can bear being sold. You know what I'm saying? Jesus came down and gave up a weekend. You can bear all that shit. You can bear not being able to have the basic necessities in life. Man, Jesus came down to die for your sins. You can bear all that. You can bear getting sexually assaulted multiple times throughout your life and motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? You can bear not being safe nowhere you go. You can bear that. Jesus, Jesus died on the cross. You can bear that. That's not that. That's He's not asking you to do too much. I mean, he came down and did it himself. So that's light work for you. <sighs> Come on. That's sick, man. I'm disgusted by that. I see through that bullshit. And I'm not going to, no. We're protesting injustice. And we're, we're hard on this shit. Fuck these religions. Fuck these gods. And I don't have no respect for no, I don't have no respect for no belief system like this. This shit is sick. This shit is disgusting. It's okay to suffer because the God gave up a few hours. Come on, man. No, 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 no. That's sick. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention and show you what they really think of your pain and suffering. How they really feel. Get over it because God went through it for a weekend. That's the end of the fucking video. Let me know what you think down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, support the channel. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Instagram. I love y'all. I'm out.